All right, so for the moment, I'm going to close the map file. We're, we're done with it for the moment. If you go back to your index file, one of the extra things that I want to add to this project is for the ability for the user to uh, customize it. We'll do a very simple thing to start off with, which is that it will ask for the user's name, and then their name can be added throughout the project. That will require a lot of JavaScript. It's dynamic. It's interactive. That's the purpose of JavaScript. Remember, the HTML is the structure, the CSS is the design, and the JavaScript is the, is the interactivity. So we need to program that to collect the name and do something with it, such as display it on screen, multiple locations throughout the project. We're going to start this off by having a trigger, which will be a button. We've got a button to load the map. Let's say we'll add another button right below it to customize the app. I'm going to save a little bit of effort by copying line 278 to 279 and then just customize it. And maybe it's not that much of a time saver. We don't need the rel anymore. It is a data roll button icon. I'm going to use the icon user. And the name is going to be customize the text that appears. href will set to pound. Using uh, an href that is simply pound creates a dummy link, creates a link that doesn't go anywhere, but this behaves like a button. So we're not pointing it to actually go anywhere yet, we're just making it behave like a button. And one of the things we will do often is we can have many buttons on our project. How will the JavaScript know that we've clicked this button to run that JavaScript? One of the easiest ways is when we use IDs or classes or some method to identify that that button that we pressed should run some JavaScript. So we will add an ID to this button. We've used IDs for sections that's how we reference the whole section. We can reference one specific button. So we'll give this an ID and we'll call this btn name. I'm putting capital N there just for readability. This has a unique identifier now. We're going to write some JavaScript code now so that when someone clicks that button, something happens. Just to make sure it's set up as I envision it so far, I'll, I'll open up I'll, I'll open up the screen just to quickly see. I've got a map button, a customize button. There's the user icon. Clicking on it, nothing happens. This is our trigger. We've got a button to click on. Now we're going to write some JavaScript. So let's jump over to our kodika.external.js file. Remember, we've got in our folder the index file, the CSS file, and the JS file. The supporting our own custom supporting JS code. So be careful, people often accidentally open the CSS file and write JavaScript in it, and it doesn't work, because it's a CSS file. Make sure you open your kodika.external.js file. So at the top it says, put your custom code here. The only thing that should go in this file is JavaScript. Because in our index file, we are referencing jQuery 2.2.4, we're able to use the jQuery um, method of, of writing shortcuts. The um, slogan of jQuery is, write less, do more. So here in our JavaScript, 
line two, let's write dollar parenthesis open close parenthesis dot on open close parenthesis. This shorthand here is like doing document dot get element by ID dot on click equals well we'll cut it right there for the moment. That line that I wrote in line two, which I made into a comment, so if you write that, make sure you comment it out, that what I just wrote is equivalent to line three, basically. This whole section here is equivalent to the dollar symbol and the parentheses, the dollar symbol. That line two is plain old JavaScript. Let's reference something on the document defined by its ID. And once we click it, do something. Line 3 is the same sort of thing. We're gonna, refi we're gonna define or we're gonna reference something uh, on screen and after some action, some event that is, do something. So we're gonna use this sort of syntax over and over with jQuery. This saves us, you know, this is, let's say, 20 characters, and this is 7. This adds up from hundreds of lines of code. This is modern, this is faster, this is more efficient, less typing, less mistakes. People often accidentally write document by ID, capital I, capital D, then it doesn't work. You're not going to mistype dollar symbol. So what goes inside of the quotes, I mean in the parentheses up on the top would be quotes um, btn name, and what would go in the parentheses of the jQuery version would be quotes pound btn name. Up here we're saying we're going to get some element referencing it by its ID, so no pound sign. Over here, we have to tell jQuery we're going to reference something by its ID, btn name. This method right here, this command, we're saying when there's a click, do something that will only work when there's a click. Well, what if there's a double click? What if there's a drag? What if there's a download or some other event? Line 2 only works with a click happening. On works with a variety of particular events. A click, a double click, a drag, etc. So we have to specify which particular event do we mean. We'll write open quote, end quote again, and we'll say click. Specifically, on a click to this element, do something, comma, space, function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. That's equivalent to plain old JavaScript of function, open close, open close, semicolon. We still have to write something like that here, like we did there, but notice here it's set to equal, and here it's, in a sense, the second parameter of the on method attached to the btn object. The object of that button has a method. Method is another name for the command. The command on, when we click, run a series of, <coughs> of extra commands, of more steps. The syntax. I wrote it like this. This is the syntax. We'll do this over and over and over. Something on something, some result. To see if we're on the right track, in the 
curly braces. Now, obviously, these have to be these symbols. It has to be parentheses right next to the function, and it has to be curly braces after the function. In the curly braces, let's write alert, open close parentheses. And in those parentheses, quotes will just say clicked. This is just to check if we're writing our code properly, if we're on the right track. The theory of this is that button should now be active. If I click that button, I should get an alert. And remember, the alert is just a basic pop-up. If I'm not getting a pop-up once I save and run my code, I should stop and fix my code. Make sure your index and your JS file are saved. Remember, save all. Run your index. If you run this JS file, it'll just spit back JS at you. Run your index file. And if it works, what should happen is the customize button gives you a pop-up. Clicked. Every time you click, it pops up a new instance of it. Let's stop there. Did everyone get a pop-up that happened after you clicked? Customize. Here's my code again. Possible failure points are that you named your button in the index file btn name lowercase and here we're typing it uppercase maybe you type the capital B over here so that name in your HTML that ID has to be exactly the same as what you're referencing in the JavaScript you won't know what object you mean what element on the page you mean unless you reference it exactly Pound sign. That's another failure point. Pound sign. We were safe with get element by ID because it's expecting an ID. Here, the jQuery selector can take anything an ID, a class, an input field, uh, the whole document itself, the body tag. It can take anything. So within there, we have to also specify the uh, uh, hash mark. Exactly, we did not specify it here because we're already saying, let's get it by the ID. All right, so did everyone get an alert? All right, that was just proof of concept. Let's delete that. Take it back to just those curly braces. We want a variety of things to happen here. We want some way to ask the user, type your name, to capture that name, and then display it on screen. So at least three different things I want to do. Uh, therefore, most likely, I want to call, or I want to run, I want to invoke, I want to use a custom function. I want to do several steps so I can bundle all of those steps into a function. That's the basic purpose of a function. Bundling a variety of steps together. The alert function is simply to make a pop-up, a very basic pop-up. But I need it to do many things. So in these curly braces, let's say get name function. Those parentheses basically means a function, a series of steps, a bundle of steps. There's no such thing as get name function built into JavaScript or jQuery. I need to define that. I need to invent what does get name actually do. Alert is defined. Alert is created so we can just invoke it. We can just run it. We can just use it. But get name doesn't exist. If I try to run my code at this point, my console will give me some error messages because it. Um, doesn't understand what that is. Just to show you, uh, hit that. Uncaught reference error. Get name is not defined. <coughs> I don't know what get name is. I looked in the jQuery file and I looked in the jQuery mobile file and I looked in all of the definition of JavaScript. There's no such thing as get name. That's a fancy way of saying what's get name.
uncaught reference error is what is get name and some other more scary stuff to look at. So we need to invent our own function here, our own definition of what get name does. So next line, we'll write function space get name parentheses curly braces. That's our basic syntax to define a function. We're going to define what get name means. And yes, of course, capitalization matters. If I'm invoking up here get name, but I have defined down here get name, this will not work. And this is one of the times that Notepad actually doesn't quite help you. Because if you do select get name, it'll find get name. It is not quite programmed to differentiate the two. It would be better if it didn't highlight both of them. That'll help me debug it. So this can accidentally give us a false sense of security. These are not the same. These are the same. We're going to have multiple steps that define what get name is, which will all be inside of the parentheses. It'll look a lot nicer if we put those various lines on their own line, those various commands in their own line. So I'm going to break up that curly brace actually onto its own line like that. And all of these extra commands that I'm going to be writing will be inside of the curly braces. This is the syntax of it. Define a function, what's its name, what does it entail? Let's write console.log, parentheses semicolon, the console object dot log, it's a method, it's a command. We saw this before, I believe. Quotes, let's say clicked again. Save it and run it. This will give us practice to open up our console, see our output, very valuable if we make errors and also valuable as we're creating our project to make sure it's working as it's supposed to. I will not get a pop-up on screen that hits me in the face that says clicked. That was alert. Console.log will give us output in our developers panel. So let's remind ourselves where that is at. Save that, and I'm running this in Chrome. I'm running it in Chrome. You should have already pressed F12 to bring up the the developer's console, that's what gives us that responsive view. F12 brings up developer console. We have elements, console. Select console. And now when you press the customize, you get output in the console. Every time you click it. It might just simply t say you clicked it twice, or three times, or twelve times. It's not going to print it ten times. It'll just show you, you clicked it ten, ten times. All right, so we're clicking the button, and we're getting a result. This is just to show us we're on the right track. Our building blocks are coming together. Next line, line 6. We'll type prompt, open close parentheses, semicolon, quotes here. What's your name? Alert creates a simple pop-up box. Prompt is related to that. And we're asking the, we're saying the message, what's your name? Save it and run it. The result should be a pop-up. What's your name? And 
hit OK. Nothing quite happens just yet. We're getting there. The prompt is a basic JavaScript method that asks for some input. It doesn't do anything with it. We haven't programmed it to do anything with it. Let's back up to that start of that line and actually write var space username equals prompt. So what that's doing is it's creating a variable called username and at the same time with the equals is uh, filling the variable with the result of asking for the user's name. All in one fell swoop. Ask for the name, save the name in the variable. To confirm that, console.log username. No quotes. If we put that in a quote, it'll print a string, it'll print a literal string, it'll print exactly username. No, I want it to print, I want it to show, I want it to log what's in the variable. By referencing the variable name, it will show what's in the variable. We talked about that previously, I believe. So now, this sh should ask for the name, save it, and then in your console, display the name you gave it. And you can do it ten times, and every new name that you put in will display in the console. So the point of uh, capturing the person's name is to display it on screen. Console log doesn't get us there yet. Console.log displays the name in the console. And almost no one knows about the console except developers. So is everyone getting the name to appear in the console. It's still saying clicked again because that's still programmed in there, obviously. If you comment that out, then it will stop saying clicked again. But it is capturing the name into the variable, saving the name in the variable, and then displaying the, the content of the variable in the console. Well, that's nice, but what I want to do is display it on screen. I want, for example, right there to say, Welcome, Victor. I want it to say, maybe over here, Learn Art, Victor. I want it over here to say, learn computers, Victor. I want my name to appear throughout the app, not just the, the console. So via jQuery, or plain old JavaScript, we can dynamically edit the existent code, HTML code. The HTML code has been written, and it's set in stone. But we can change it with jQuery or JavaScript. Let's do that. Let's make it so that it also displays my name on the screen. Um, we saw in the map that uh, we saw that in the map it, it had a placeholder in the map file. It had a placeholder to display either the map or the directions. So we can use something like that as well, some sort of placeholder element which was empty, to then fill it with the value of that variable. Let's go back to our index file. We need to set up 
uh, some placeholders. So let's go back and find where it says welcome. Remember using find can quickly jump you to line 46. I wanted to say welcome Victor. So when we did create this placeholder, we saw the div is, a, is an empty container placeholder to display an image. But div has a cousin called span. We'll use span in this case. The big difference between div and span div is a block level element, span is an inline element. The short answer is that div will want to take up its own space and push away other things. Div wants to display in its own block, so it'll break its own it'll break out of the existing line into its own line. Span will play nice and it'll stay on the same line as welcome. So that's an empty container. And in there, we will make it display your name. But in order for it to know this, in order for the JavaScript to know that, we need to reference it, and there's many ways to do it. But we've seen that with IDs, we can reference elements on screen. But remind me again, what's the big difference between an ID and a class? ID can only be used one time. I want my name to be displayed multiple times throughout my project. ID won't work. ID can only be used one time per HTML file. So we want to use a class. We want to give this span a name via class. So that then via JavaScript, we can dynamically put my name into it. So this needs a class attribute. So class works great for CSS and JavaScript. Let's call this welcome MSG, welcome message. It can be anything we want. We're inventing it. We're making up a class. It could be called my name, username, whatever. Welcome message. This is the message that will appear on the welcome. That's all we need here. This is our placeholder. I want my name to appear more than one place, more than one spot. So if you select that whole chunk, span, slash span, and copy and paste that anywhere throughout your project, our name will appear there. So I wanted to say, welcome, Victor. Learn computers, Victor. Learn art, Victor. So I'm going to copy that and find the other spots in my app where I want my name to appear. On line 126, I've got learn art, John. So the name will appear there. And over on line 200 something, we'll have the computers screen. 210. Learn computers, Abraham. So in three places now, JavaScript will put my, my name in there because I'm using a class. A class can be reused multiple times, an ID only once. Save your index file. We're not done yet. This is just the placeholder to display on screen. We haven't told the JavaScript or we haven't used the JavaScript yet to put the name on screen. Go back to your JavaScript. We're displaying the name in the console. We want to display it on screen. We're going to write the jQuery selector. Uh, we're not going to use dot on this time. We're going to use dot write. Some object on the screen, we are going to write to it. We're going to write code into it. Whereas previously, we have some object on click, do something. Now we're going to say some object, write something to it. The particular object is quotes dot welcome msg. 
dot means class. So wherever in our HTML is the object of class equals welcome message, make sure you spell it exactly correct, write something in that span. And the something, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself, not write, sorry, HTML. We're going to write some HTML in that span. Write would do something else, but more uh, detrimental. Dot HTML. We're going to write some HTML. We're going to dynamically write some HTML in that span. Username. Instead of writing username on the um, console, write it on the screen in that placeholder. see if that works. That should be enough. Save your files. Input a name. Go back to the home screen and hopefully it should have your name in there. Let's see. I'm going to go to About, Customize, Victor. Click OK. Go back to the home screen. Open Victor. Art. Learn Art, Victor. Computers, they're computers, Victor. Almost there, but it's taking my name. I didn't exactly write it how I thought. Go back and put any other name, go back, and rewrote it dynamically. Without a space, without a, a comma, I would want welcome, comma, on, exclamation point. It's only doing exactly what I told it. Again, I'm not afraid of the computers taking over yet. Computers are dumb. They don't do anything until you program them. Until you program them to take over the world. So I'm not worried. And here I didn't program anything about styling and anything like that, so it just spat out the name as is. To make it a little bit more properly formatted and such, we're going to harken back to when we edited that little Google Map pop-up where it had originally said coordinates, latitude, longitude, and then we went in and changed it a bit. We, re we rewrote the HTML. We're able to do that here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it say welcome, comma, space, the name, exclamation point. We're going to use the plus symbol. We're going to use concatenation. We're going to add content on screen. So we'll write quote and quote space plus. We're going to write something in the quotes that will be displayed on screen exactly. And then we're going to add on screen whatever's in the variable. So in this we've got comma space. It's gonna then put a comma and a space right after the word welcome and then it'll add the username and then an exclamation point. Try that. That should um, that should now give you a slightly prettier output. Welcome, comma, space, username, exclamation point. And it did it everywhere.
All right, let's let's look at something right here. Uh, well, did this work for everyone? Does anyone need any help? Okay, let's look at this. Uh, what if I go to About and click Customize and click Cancel? Go back. Welcome, no. Learn art, no. Learn computers, no. Clicking Cancel sends back a null object. Sometimes someone is going to do that. Sometimes a person doesn't want to customize it, they want to they want to cancel it. So we need to deal with that. Or else or else it'll our, your app is going to call someone null. Uh, what about this? Someone's going to type something here and they just click okay. Console seems empty. And then when I go back over here, welcome, empty space. So, again, we never programmed it to be smarter than what it was built in with. So, some possible failure scenarios are someone clicks null and someone puts nothing. This is beta testing or alpha testing. What if someone writes this? What's this right here? This is a cartoon character cursing at me. And it'll take it. And it'll display it. Welcome, you little so-and-so. Okay, maybe I don't want that either. Maybe I want real words. What about if I have one, two, three? Welcome, one, two, three. That might not necessarily be good or bad, because what if this is user Cool guy 99. It'll say welcome, cool guy 99. What I'm getting at here is that we haven't set this up for any uh, error checking or for good input. We're just taking anything that anyone writes. And this is how websites get hacked. This is how passwords are cracked. This is how databases are compromised. Hackers try to figure out on like an input box and such, did they make this as secure as it could have been? There's instances where someone adds here, for example, a SQL command, and this gets passed into the database, and it executes a SQL command in the database, and all records get deleted. So I'm trying to put an HTML command in here. Welcome, hello world, h1. This is not, and this has not been programmed to not take that. This is not programmed to strip out the stuff it's not supposed to take. It will happily take it and happily oops, and happily render it. Welcome Google, active link, hacked. So we never programmed it to deal with that. And I just noticed. I left the site, came back to the site, it's gone. If this was a legitimate name, I would want that name to greet me every time I, I came back into the app, wouldn't I? If I exit the the, the site and go elsewhere and come back, I wanted to remember my name. It hasn't been programmed for that either. So what I'm getting at is that uh, this stuff is complex. There's a lot to keep in mind. There's a lot to, to do and program and fix. And there's a saying about there's nothing foolproof because there are so many ingenious fools. And so I'm just showing you here all of these examples of bad input. A regular person 
maybe wouldn't be trying to break it, but there's a lot of people out there that are trying to break stuff, either for malicious purposes or just for fun. This is fun for people too. I can understand that. I want to see what are the limits of this. What can I do with it? Um, so we need to maybe figure out how to strip out the, the bad, the invalid characters, and we have a way to do that, a way for it to only accept uh, valid characters via JavaScript. So let's go back to our JavaScript. What we're doing here is we are um, we are displaying username as is. What we could do is at the moment that we take the input we could sanitize it. Or at the moment we display it we can sanitize it. It would be best to sanitize it as soon as possible because we're accepting something and we're putting it in here and then we're using it and in that in the middle of that point it could be it could be bad. So I think there's two ways to do it. We'll do it this way first. Let's try it this way. We're saying um, we're creating that username and filling it with whatever the person wrote. Uh, at the same time, then we're going to then replace any invalid characters. So we'll do dot replace parentheses. We've got the method of replace, and this will either work here or on the other spot. We'll see. We're about to replace whatever the person typed. Let's replace the bad characters. Inside of replace, we'll put a slash. This is going to be a regular expression. We are going to use um, regular expressions to parse the data to sanitize it. So we will then say square brackets. Um, we have a set of characters that we will uh, only accept in the square characters. The square brackets kind of looks like an array. But this is related to uh, a regular expression. Caret symbol, which is shift six. And here we're saying we're only going to accept values a through z and a through z. We're only going to accept uppercase a through z and lowercase a through z. After the square bracket slash g, I don't remember what slash g off the top of my head. Any regex wizards in here? What's that? Global. Global. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you, regex wizard. Uh, then we do comma, space, quote, and quote. Anything else besides those values will then be replaced with nothing. that should be it. Let's confirm that. Oops, I'm expected to run. Okay, I think that we don't add it there, we add it over here. Yeah. So sorry about that. We we don't add it to the variable at that moment. We add it to the prompt. Just move that over. <clears throat> Just move that over to prompt. We're doing the replace JavaScript upon the result of the prompt, not at the creation of the variable. If you type something like John 99 or John exclamation point, it'll strip out everything besides letters, A through Z, capital and lowercase.
I'm typing in uh, a name with some numbers. Click OK. Console tells me it's stripping them out. And then uh, when I actually show it on screen, it's just the name. So if I try to do that trick about heading 1 and all of that, it's not within the character set. stripped out the symbols but it kept the character so this is going to require a little bit more uh, a little bit more work to have it know what to keep and what not and it might be difficult at this point but there it's going to show the valid characters but at least it's not allowing malicious content it's not creating that active link, it's not creating a different heading, it's not screwing up the design, it's not going to accept the CSS, and so forth. So it's not perfect, but that's why there's bugs in software, that's why there's updates to software, that's... We're seeing that in action, we're seeing that we have to beta test it, and test it, and test it, and try to find all of these issues, and get other people to work on it, and break it. People get paid to break software. Um, for the moment, that's fine. What we have here will take more effort to really only get it to do a valid name, but then what is a valid name? That's, that's fine for the moment. Um, we'll take our second break, and then what I want to do is, well, I don't want it to forget my name. Every time I refresh the browser or get out of it, it's going to forget my name. I want it to be more permanent. We have that ability. We have an ability to save data permanently. Uh, via HTML5. Uh, so, let's uh, it's 827. We'll take a break till 837, and we'll come back so we can get a little bit more permanent storage.